You talk about how much you, and again, I'm going to keep going backwards because I try to speak to people who are in the beginning stages of getting their business off the ground. Yeah. Okay. How much money did it originally, how, what was the initial investment like? Did the <laughs> initial investment come from you? Did you take yeah. money from your friends and family? Because we're going uh, to of, of open this up for crowdfunding. But yeah, it, it came, it came from me. Um, and it was significant. It was like two hundred thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, it was like two hundred thousand dollars. But I was okay. fortunate enough, but see, really, I'm a risk take, huh? You really believed in this project. Oh yeah, I did. I had to because I saw it. Like and 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 once I know what we could build, um, I had to go ahead and do that. So I I, I took, you know, I took took the income. Um, and, and built the, what we call an MVP. And from that MVP, that's how we got to where we are now. Okay, I'm not as smart as you. I'm not in the tech world. What is MVP? MVP is a minimal viable product. Minimum viable product. So the, 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 the lowest, you know, the lowest functioning piece of product that you can make, right? To show people that the app works. And, and Ramiro and the team um, excelled past that. They went way past that. And so uh, we had something that worked. And again, just to have that proof of concept. So that's what you usually do. And, and, and being a black founder, that what works against you is, you know, my friends, and I've had a lot of counsel in the tech space. I've had a lot of successful people in the tech field um, be able to give me advice and, and coach me. I mean, Jewel Burks, who's the head of, of Google for Startups in North America is one of my mentors and she sold her company to Amazon. Um, called Park Pick and and Barry Gibbons and Justin Dawkins, all these great people. They're like, you know, black black tech tech founders. We have to go above and beyond, right, to do something where somebody else can go. A, a, a white tech entrepreneur can go right down the idea on a napkin and get a whole bunch of money for it. I'll give you a good example. Um, and this isn't even something that I, I even hold against the founders of Clubhouse, but when Clubhouse was founded. They only had 2,000 users in two rooms and got a $100 million valuation and got $12 million just off two rooms and the idea. And so I knew for me, I would have to go, I got to build something that works. All the buttons, it's got to be fly, it's got to be sexy because I one thing doesn't work, it doesn't look right. They'll go, oh, no, it's not good. So you know you have to excel above and beyond. So I made extra sure that fan base was something that no one could criticize for not being uh, functional, you know what I'm saying, and working well. Can, can, can I ask you where, because obviously, I, I, you know, you, you come from the music space. Yeah. Where do you find, if, if, if Sean, I, I, I want to create an app today. Mm -hmm. Where do I even go to find a dev team? Where do I go to, to find, you know, I hear you mentioning your, your um, back-end dev team and you yeah. said these guys went above and beyond. Did yeah. you know them? Did you, did, like, did, do you go to, uh, I don't know, Fiverr or something and, and, and look for, like, how, does, how do you even come in contact with a dev team? I, I was blessed. My attorney had worked with my development team on a project that he'd done and he just recommended them. He goes, man, these are some good guys. And one of the things- Are they, are they local or, or are they overseas? Both. So locally, the company is founded here in Atlanta, Georgia, where I am. But the, the good majority of our team is also in Argentina, which allowed us to build the app for a third of the cost of it. it to build what I built, would have taken like $600,000 here in the US. If I would have just went and got some devs out of the US and done it. But the ability to actually work with people in the, in Atlanta and and in uh, South America and Argentina just gave the advantage. It was just a suggestion from my attorney, who's been my attorney for 18 years, and he was like, "Yo, I know these guys. They're really good. Check them out." And we did it, and it was remarkable. And it was just a perfect a perfect marriage and timing. So I'm 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 super blessed to have those guys because you know I was interviewing people for this position, and there were some other decisions that I could have made. And I'm so glad that I made the decision to hire uh, Ramiro and the team because they are the core and the engine of what makes fan base work. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so again, I want to ask you because I don't know and I'm sure there's somebody out there who does not know. 
you're blessed. You had two hundred thousand dollars to work with. Yeah. Most people, they have an idea, they have a dream, they just don't have the capital. Right. So you could put it into motion off the bat. Yeah. Did you have a business plan? Uh, was there something in writing that you had that you can show uh, Romero and those guys? Like, look, this is my vision. Mm -hmm. You bring this thing to life. And if so, how much is this going to cost me? Because there's always so much, uh, especially for people who have never gone into business for themselves. Right. So they're taught you got to have a, a business plan and your five year plan. And these are the practical steps to take. Mm -hmm. Take the traditional steps or did you go at it just a bit differently? A little bit of both. I'm I'm definitely a person that plans and prepares. Mm -hmm. I remember the other day I posted a photo of writing a sketch of what I wanted the fan base logo to look like, the idea of what the, what I wanted the app to be. It was all written down on pieces of paper. Um and and actually, in, in actuality, I had a I had a mentor, a young woman who was actually part of this journey with me. And this is a thing that I think is important too. And who knows what's going to happen with fan base, but she was part of this journey. And then all of a sudden, she just disappeared. Like, and we were working together. She was really the one that was showing me the ropes. And I had already hired Ramiro, and we started working. But he was like, you know, what happened? to this girl and I just think, I don't know if she had like something going on in her personal life, but it kind of just left me like, all right, I wanted two things. I can learn how to do this and keep going uh, or not, you know what I'm saying? And I just decided to keep going. So, you know, I prepared like a deck and I, you know, like, again, I, I spoke to the people, I found other mentors and people that I could seek advice from about how, how to build the product. And I took it very, very seriously. Like I, I'm the, I, you know, I learned how to use Apple Keynote, you know, um, to be able to do a deck. And that takes a lot, you know what I'm saying, for be able to do that. So I'm very hands-on, you know, with what I do. So I, I was able to do that and it worked out pretty well for myself. I, I'm, you have to, you have to know your space. You have to research, like regardless of whatever the money is. And this is what people say all the time, because, you know, I, I've, I've been told by even venture capitalists that I've, I've seen people that have raised $20 million and don't have a product to show for it. It's all about execution. If you can't execute, you could have all the money in the world. You could have a million dollars and still not execute. It's about execution. So you have to know your business. I took the time to study social media patterns, understand there's a bit of sociology that comes to social media. Um, there's a bit of understanding of how the business works even having a music industry background because I have founder friends of mine that were actually voted out of their own companies. I'm like, how does that happen? Like, you know, when you're in the music business, you you keep your head on a swivel because you know somebody, it's always a, a, exactly. a snaky deal around the corner. So I'm like, even Steve Jobs got voted out of his own company. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.